men who have um, gathered today and i want to also uh, appreciate this singular privilege to share the word of god as it is given to me and i want to also appreciate uh, my brother who had did the opening prayer for me which was absolutely amazing and so i, I go straight to it um i don't i didn't i didn't um find out exactly how much uh, time I have, although I did have a little bit of discussion with Pastor Wiki before, um, but I just want to go straight into it. Um, this very message, I want to just give a background to it before I uh, actually give you the uh, title to it. Last Sunday, while we were doing our praise and worship, um, I, I had the message very clear, um, and then um, I, I, as I was about to step out while Pastor Mike was beckoning on people, those who have anything to share to come out, I, I felt a restraining hand that says, no, don't. And I was, oh my goodness, this is two weeks in a row that this is happening. And um, I, 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 I had a clear word the previous Sunday and I, I was said, I was told it was not time to share. And I, I struggled and I felt quite guilty um, because I, I, I didn't um, uh, I know why I wouldn't be able to uh, go uh, and, and say exactly what I felt or what I heard and um, what I also uh, saw in my mind. So anyway, I, I, I did as I was told, so I, I held my peace. Uh, it became even more, more difficult when um, our sister, Sister Michelle, Michelle was um, uh, 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 expressing the same thing about being, you know, um, asked why she didn't share what um, she was supposed to share. But I had another word that says, stay calm and you will know within a short time why I don't want you to go out there to share it now. So I, I, I held my peace, but I still felt guilty. Anyway, um, I went home and then the next day, um, Pastor Wiki called me. And the moment Pastor Wiki called me and told me why he was calling, the Spirit of the Lord said, I told you, that message is for my sons first. So that is why I am here. So it was orchestrated by God himself who gave me a message on that Sunday and said, no, it is for my men. Um, and this tells me that we all, as men, in this fellowship in particular, need to understand how very highly the Lord has uh, actually regarded us. Um, otherwise, why would he have something that he wants to say and he prefers that it be said to the men first and maybe later on he could now move on from there? And that is how the title of this message came about. The way it was said to me is the way I have put the title. What the only thing I have changed is to personalize it. And I would love us to also do say um, uh, what the title is, is Arresting My Wandering uh, Mind. Arresting My Wandering Mind so that I can do great things. Um, the Lord said to me, uh, if you can arrest your wandering mind, then you can do great exploits. And so I, 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 was, I was really taken aback when that message came true. And, um, and then I, 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 when I looked in the front, I, 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 I cannot say to you that I clearly saw a being, but I knew that there was somebody that was going from person to person. And that person was looking, you know, as the person was looking into them, I, I, had, the, I had that same voice say to me, I'm looking into their mind. I'm looking into their mind. And he went to the front and went on the front row and came back through the aisle and um, uh, uh, towards me. And then he now said it the final time. If you can arrest, your wandering mind, then you can do great 
exploits, great things. Um, so I, I, I began to really, really get very worried because I realized that this is an issue. This is a problem. This is something that even though most of us may be reluctant to accept, even though most of the people who may have been very, very experienced Christians, even pastors, even overseers, and, and um, people who have um, been in the faith for a very long time struggle with this. And, and, and it is something that the Lord was looking at. And we were doing prison worship. And, 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 and he found that most of the men, I, would, I, want to, I want to narrow it down to the men now, because those were the people I saw him go into. Now, most of the men have wandering minds, myself inclusive. And this is exactly the way we come before him. And this is exactly what is contrary to something like when you go to Psalm 9, 1, he says that we will praise him with all our heart, with all our soul. Everything is supposed to be there. But you, you will bear me witness that even when you are in his presence, there are a thousand and one things that keeps coming true. So I want you to personalize this today uh, as I did uh, and um, begin to really, really convict yourself so that you can be able to overcome this very menace. It is a serious matter. The, the, the thing about the, 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 the makeup of a man is that he's got so many things that is actually pulling for his attention, contending for his attention. And this is a problem that has always been there. And then um, we will look at a few of those things and then we will begin to see exactly what the Lord is uh, trying to say to us. Now, we all know very clearly that the mind is the battleground for the enemy. The, it has always been, it will always be. Even he tried to play with the mind of the Lord Jesus during the time he was doing his 40 days uh, and 40 nights fasting and trying to, to show him certain things that will distract him from the very mission that he had. So the battleground is the mind. And all the time, even when your pastoral duties or your duties in the church one way or the other interferes with your connection, with your, with your direct uh, 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 submission, just like our brother was singing, you know, surrendering all. And, and, and surrendering all is about coming in, 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 in the entirety of our being and, 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 and laying it down. And Pastor Wiki, uh, I was like, what, what is he doing when Pastor Wiki was trying to, 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 to introduce this very meeting? He, he, he began to say something about just leaving everything, leaving all the distraction, leaving everything and just, and just coming in, you know, total and, 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 and whole uh, before him. That was just before the prison worship. And it was during prison worship that the Lord came to say this to me. And, and, and I begin to realize that this is the time that is very important to him. And it is also very important to us. And this is the time that he actually uh, uh, says things that he wants to happen or give us that mandate to do great things. And he began to speak to my mind to say, this is the problem. If only my people will learn to just disconnect from every other thing, when, especially when they are in my presence. He says, there is no limit to what they can do because this is the time that I empower them to do great things. And he says the difference between people who are achievers in the kingdom and those who are just out there, this, the difference is that there are those who know how to lose themselves in my presence. There are those who know how to just forget everything about themselves and focus on me 
and then I am able to deal with them. So that battleground is very, very important. And I want to say to us as men today that the reason the Lord has decided to speak to us is that we are the ones who lead the way. We are the ones who lead the families. We we'll lead in, in all the spheres. And, and our sisters are supposed to look at us and say, this is the men that are lifting up holy hands before the Lord. So the, the assault of the enemy on a man's mind is relentless. He doesn't stop. So you need to know that today. I need to know that today that the enemy never stops. The barrage of darts and missiles of different kinds of thoughts that he, he, he brings, especially when we are supposed to be in the presence of God, is, 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 is beyond what you can ever imagine. And there is no way you can be able to fight this on your own. There is no way you can be able to, 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 to overcome it on your own. You need help. I need help. Everybody needs help because we are in a season again where the Lord is looking for those who can do great things in his name. And those people that he's going to use to do these great things are those who are able to win this battle of the mind and be able to bring every thought that comes into their mind on that subjection. We will come to the solutions and that's where we are looking at the scriptures. So these are the things that we, we need to look at today. This is exactly very important to all of us. No, I, I wonder if there is any of us who can comfortably put up their hand and say, while I am in the church, while I am in, in, in the presence of the Lord, even while I am the, on the altar, that my mind does not wonder about. The Lord is saying that is a disruption. It stops me from doing what I want to do. It is either we are thinking about our future for the young people and even for the older, older people like us, you're looking at your future and you're thinking, where am I going to end? What is going to happen to me? Some of these things we carry to the place of worship and the Lord is saying, no, it shouldn't be there. You know, how am I going to make it in life? What am I going to do? You know, you're thinking about your present, you're thinking, you know, what you ought to have done, which you have not yet done or what you have failed to do in your life. Uh, you're a young person and you're thinking of the things that you are going to be able to achieve in life and all that. And these things, they come at such a time. And sometimes, you know, we, 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 we also find out that we are kind of bringing in our past. The past comes assaulting us. The present is challenging us. And the future is, is uncertain. And all these things tend to flood in. They tend to flood in. But remember that the Bible says that when the enemy shall come against us like a flood, that the Lord said he will raise a standard. We need to call upon the Lord to raise that standard. It is very, very important that we look at these things and be able to begin to think about them. You know, the time we are in the presence of God is not the time to think about our marriage, our children and our family. It is not the time to think about our ambitions and our targets. You know, it's not a, the time to worry about our uncertainties and insecurities. That's not the time. It's not the time to think about who is better than me or who I am better than. It is just an endless battle and it keeps raging on and on and on. And we need to know that this is exactly what it is all about. And that is how we come to the first um, scripture in Psalm 42, 5, David found himself in this very situation. And if you look at Psalm 42, 5, and you begin it from one, if you begin it from verse one, you will be amazed. It was in the same kind of church setting. That's what, when I, when I got this and I was, I was dwelling on, on verse five, which is what I wanted to use as the solution to this wandering of the mind, that worrying and all that. <clears throat> the Lord said, no. I want you to understand why I had to give you this very message in the church during praise and worship. So I went back and I looked and behold, I found that David was in the place of worship. My heart pants for you, just like the deer pants for water. I remember 
when I go into the into the presence in your presence or in the into your house. You know, David was in that situation. But suddenly, in verse 5, David cries out. Something is not right here. There is, why would he, in the middle of it, he now remembers and says, no, something is going on with me. Even though I am telling God that my soul pants for him like the deer pants for water, there is still something that is troubling me. So in verse 5, he went back again, and he now began to ask a question. I want to read this in about two or three translations. I want us to get it very clearly for us to know that this is what happens to us. Even in the middle of worship, even in the middle of, of ministration and whatever, it is possible for our mind to wander away. But it is also very, very, very possible and pertinent that we understand that we have an authority to, 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 to stop our mind from wandering to call our mind to order. And so in verse five of that chapter 42 of the book of Psalm, the David now began to ask the question, and this is the amplified version of it. He says, why are you dis in despair, O oh my soul? Why are you in despair? And why have you become restless and disturbed within me? Why are you like, this? Why, what, what, why are you disturbed? Why are you experiencing this type of up and down situation inside of me? Why are you doing this, my mind? And you can understand very clearly that he is speaking with authority. He is not pleading with his mind. He's questioning his mind. He's asking his mind, why are you straying? Why are you going in different directions? And then he cautions his mind and says, hope in God and wait for I shall yet praise him. Hope in God and wait. So there is always a way to call your mind to order and stop it from wandering. And that is exactly what David was doing. And I want to look at it again from another translation. I just want us to understand this very, very clearly so that we do not miss it at all. It is important that we get this very clearly so that we will be able to understand that when we are in the presence of the Lord, even though we may be there physically present, we need to be there spiritually present as well. Whether you are, you are on the altar or whether you are in your, your personal uh, uh, prayer place or whether you are in praise and worship in the church, but I will tell us that most of the most powerful things I've ever received from the Lord comes during our praise and worship in Holy Nation Church. So that time is important. But in this particular situation, David was questioning something. In New uh, King James Version, he says, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul, why are you cast down? Why are you cast down? And why are you disquieted within me? Why are you disquieted? Why are you not concentrating? Why are you not focusing? And then he cautions again and says, hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. That is positive confession. Stop doing what you're doing, my mind. I want you to focus on the worship. I want you to focus on the praise. I want you to, to, to be connected to heaven, you know? And then in this very translation, it says, for the help of his countenance, the, for the help of God's countenance is there. It is always there, that help is always there. And finally, I want to look at another translation that will also bring it home to us. It's, uh, David, in this very translation, asks it this way, why am I discouraged? Why am I discouraged? Many a times you don't go out there to be discouraged. You don't go out there to be troubled, but your mind drags you down there. And David is like, no, 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 I'm not having this. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. That is his way of arresting it. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my savior and my God. And this is the way David was attacking it. 
and saying, no, 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 no. I'm not going to give in to this. I'm not going to allow you to drag me into this. This is not going to happen. And this is exactly what we are dealing with today. We need to understand that it is a serious matter. It is important that we learn to control our mind. But then, like I said, it is not something we can do on our own. We need help. We need help. Whenever our mind begins to wander, we need to understand that there is a problem there. There is a, it's something that the enemy is trying to make us, uh, help us to, uh, to, 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 to miss or to, to be denied of. Whenever he starts bringing in thoughts that are not supposed to come in at the time they are supposed to come in, I want to be very clear about this message. I want to, when, when I was trying to prepare this message, I, I you know, the, the issue of bringing our thoughts under captivity and all that, those are relevant here. But it is not principally about the thoughts of any other person. It is not about the, the imaginations of any other person. Because when we go on to 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we will be able to see exactly what we are expected to do more than what David has done. But I want us to understand that it is about the wandering of our mind that concerns the Lord here. It is about us being in his presence, raising our hand and singing the song, but our mind is elsewhere. Because I saw him looking into the mind of people. He knows the mind. He sees the mind. So we may look very holy in church. We may look holy in, in the presence of, in, in the place of prayer. We may be saying the best prayer ever but our mind could still be wandering at the same time. So it is important that we understand this and that we deal with it today and learn that the Lord is really concerned about it and he's saying that it is a hindrance, it is an impediment, it stops us from getting what we should get and we need to be very, very careful here. Now, if we are not having our mind at peace, then there is a problem. And then in Romans 8, 6, he says, he says, for to set the mind as flesh is death. If you set your mind on the flesh, it is death, spiritual death. So whenever your, and my mind begins to wander everywhere, it is the flesh. It's nothing to do with my, my spirit man. It is my flesh that is interfering and trying to submerge my spirit man. And I need to wake up from that very slumber because this is exactly what the enemy, where the enemy wants us to be, where the flesh is on top. The flesh is not supposed to be on top. The battle is between the flesh and the spirit. And the spirit should always be above if we are what we claim that we are. And so Romans 8, 6 says, for to set the mind on flesh is death. But to set the mind on spirit is life and peace. So if we want life and peace, our mind must be set on the spirit. And the spirit is always, always an evidence of the word of God. So we need to always set our mind on the spirit so that the spirit of God can help us. We need help to control our mind. Our mind, our mind is a very difficult organ to, 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 to actually control. So we need to really, really be very careful. You know, what this very Romans 8, 6 means is that we are connected and ready to receive from the Lord when we set our mind on the spirit. If our mind is on the spirit, I mean, it's just about the same thing when the scripture says that you should, you know, put your heart on things above. And that is what actually connects you to the things that is coming because every good thing comes from above anyway. So whatever we are going to receive is going to come from him. So before we look at actually certain characteristics of the wandering mind and what the wandering mind can do to us, you know, and what prompted David to react in the way he reacted. I want us, we want to also look at what Paul uh, uh, said in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, um, particularizing on 5b. But let us look at that 10, uh, 10 5 again, and then we'll be able to see exactly what the, the, the Lord was saying there. And um, we, want, we, we, we are looking at it also in context, in context of 
what was said in verse three and four as well. But let us look at that five, first of all. It says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And the deep part of it now says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And this is the one that concerns us, that we are able to bring. This time around, we know very clearly that this scripture, Paul was writing to the Corinthians. But we need to put our, ourselves in the place of the Corinthians today that we may be free from this very serious issue. So now the, 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 the situation here is very clear. We, in the B part of it, we said, this is bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So there is a need for us to bring every thought that comes into our mind into captivity to the obedience of Christ, that we may be able to assess the throne of grace and mercy. The, 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 the new translation of this particular one says, we destroy every proud obstacle that keep people, and where there is people, I put us, from knowing or seeing God. I put seeing there. Anything that stops us from knowing or seeing God is not our friend. We need to destroy it. We must try to destroy it. And the wandering mind is an obstacle. It stops us from seeing, knowing, or you know, being close to our God. So it says, we captured their, when we talk about their rebellion, rebellions, we say, what about our own rebellions? Because when our mind is rebelling, when we are not focused, when we are thinking of our business, our career, our future, our marriage, our children, when we are supposed to be in worship, when we are supposed to be in his presence, it is rebellious. And, and here in the New Life Translation, he says, we capture their rebe rebellions, rebellious thoughts, and teach them to obey Christ. So we need to capture our rebellious thoughts, our wandering mind, and teach our mind through the help of the Holy Spirit to obey Jesus Christ, to respect and revere him when we are in his presence so that he can be able to, 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 to have the encounter that he seeks with us. This is very, very important. And we need to be able to learn to do this. We need to be able to understand. So when we look at that very scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, let us go back to the verse 4 and 5. And when we look at it, we find that it's a battle. It is a pure battle. And that is what Paul was preparing to show us, that for us to control our thoughts, for us to bring our thoughts into captivity, into subjection, it is a battle. And that is why, in, in, in that three and four, he started, he says, for though we walk in the flesh, which means though we may be worshiping in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Our worship is supposed to be a serious spiritual battle where we open up the heavenlies. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So it's not something you can wake up and say, no, 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 no. My, I'm not, my mind is not going to wander today, um, you know, uh, when I go, uh, go to church today or when I go into praise and worship, I'm just going to be looking at the altar, uh, looking at the choristers as they are singing. Uh, that, that's not going to get you anywhere. This is something that you must understand that is an attack on you and you need to deal with it as such. It's not a carnal battle. It is, it is a warfare. It is not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down, you know, the arguments and every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So you must learn to do that. We must learn to do it. We must learn to say to our mind, why are you disquieted within me? Why are you thinking about the things you, you are not supposed to be thinking about? Why are you straying? Why are you going everywhere? You need to be here. You need to focus here. This is what we need to do. And it is important that we learn to do this. Very, absolutely very, very important. And we need to be able to understand that casting down these arguments and every high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God 
is all about everything we've talked about, the things that the enemy bring to our mind to try to weigh us down, to try to confuse our thoughts so that we, can, we will not be able to receive from the Lord. So this is very, very important. We need to be able to deal with that and deal with it decisively so that we can be able to move on and do exactly what God wants us to do. Now, I want us to, uh, as we are digesting some of these scriptures that we have already shared, I, I want to, 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 to give us some facts about the wandering mind. And I believe that uh, as, as, as we begin to, to look at them, you begin to really take this much more seriously, as I do. Um, you know, these facts are, they are exactly what they are, facts. We need to be careful about how our mind wanders, especially when we are in the presence of God. Now, number one fact is that a wandering mind is an unstable, powerless mind. When a mind wanders all over the place, it is unstable and it is powerless. In other words, it cannot do any exploits. It cannot go any further than within that very environment where it is. So it is important that we, we understand that. Number two, a wandering mind lacks focus and direction, hence cannot actualize anything. When a mind is always wandering, that mind lacks focus. Any mind that cannot focus is unable to actually get any direction. And when you have no direction, there is no way you can actualize anything because it comes and it goes because you're not able to concentrate because your mind is wandering all over the place. And even when probably you know, a scripture is given, you cannot dwell on it. You cannot get anything out of it because your mind is wandering. Sometimes you even miss some of the things that the Lord is saying because your mind is wandering. Number three, a wandering mind is incapable of hearing. It cannot hear because there's too much noise. It cannot see because there's too many things coming into his vision. He's distracted with one thing or the other people, the addresses, the, whatever, the mannerisms and everything. He is just totally and completely unable to see what the spirit of God is releasing or receiving a deep message from God. I take that number three totally again. A wandering mind is incapable of hearing, seeing, or receiving a deep message from God. There's no way he can receive a deep message from God. He cannot see it. And even if he sees it, he's going to see it in a very vague form. He cannot also hear because there's too much noise around his ears because he's allowing the enemy to whisper to him from every direction. Number four, a wandering mind is a reflection of an indisciplined person who cannot follow things through. A person who lacks discipline, he cannot follow anything through. He starts this, he stops there. He starts this, he stops there. He's unable to follow things through because his mind is wandering. His mind is jumping around. His mind is all over the place. So it becomes very difficult for that very person to be able to, to, to receive something and follow it through. It is difficult for that very mind. Number five, a wandering mind is incapable of meditation. Meditation is important if you will ever be able to digest the word of God. Jeremiah said, I found his word and I ate them. So for you to eat the word of God, for you to, to, to dwell in the word of God, David said, the word of oh, your word have I, have, have I hidden in my heart. How do you hide it in your heart if you cannot meditate on it? How can you be a doer of the word if you cannot meditate on the word? You need to know the law in order to obey the law. And so a wandering mind is incapable of meditation. It's also incapable of reflection and logical thinking. 
So when you cannot reflect on something, how are you going to come to a, a decent decision? And when you, you lack logical thinking ability, there is a big problem because of the wandering of the mind. The wandering of the mind, very, very important. No wonder, you know, that the man whose faith wavers is also like the one whose mind wanders. Cannot receive anything from the Lord. Nothing tangible. Just as the wandering mind cannot meditate, cannot reflect, and cannot do logical thinking, it cannot process information. It can't process information. So even when information is downloaded by heaven to him, or he, he's unable to process it, he doesn't understand what it is talking about. Why? Because his mind is unsettled. I pray that the Lord will help us today to begin to reject this in the name of Jesus. Now, number seven, I think, a wandering mind is always on the periphery, never deep or high. Every wandering mind is always on the periphery, is never deep in the things of God or high in the things of God. It is always on the byline, always on the byline. It struggles to grow. It struggles to take root. Why? Because it has a wandering mind. It has a wandering mind. It cannot go deep, cannot go high. And number eight, a wandering mind is weak. It's a weak mind. It's vulnerable and is prone to defeat. See, when you have a wandering mind, when I have a wandering mind, it means that I am weak spiritually. It means that I am vulnerable, which means I'm open. I am prone to defeat. The enemy can defeat me anytime because he knows that he can bombard my mind with a lot of rubbish. And in the process, he blocks me from seeing what God is saying. There is danger there or there is a problem there. That individual becomes a punching bag for the enemy because the enemy can always take a shot at the person at any time. And number nine, a wandering mind is a liability to God because God is trying to get through to me. He's unable to get through to me, just like what I saw him doing, going from person to person, looking into their mind. I'm sure he wanted to say something to some people, you know, and, and then you become a liability to God uh, and, 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 and you become a liability to the church because the church is counting on you and me so, so that, that we may be able to, bring down this information that God has got for us. And even unto myself, even unto yourself, you become a liability too, because you are unable to be as useful as God wants you to be, because your mind, my mind is wandering everywhere. A wandering mind finally misses his day of visitation. Everyone has a day of visitation. There is always a day that the Lord wants to give you one message or the other. If your mind is wandering, if you're worried about your accommodation, your car, your possessions, your problems, your everything, the day of that visitation, like I saw him going from person to person, the possibility of missing that day of, of, of visitation is very hard. It's very, very hard because you are physically present, but spiritually absent. I pray that that will not be a portion. Now, these are the things that David realized, and that is what we were trying to see him tackle in Psalm 42.5. And David just decided, like, we, we, we must also decide the same way today, to rebuke our mind or our soul to bring it back to focus and direction and say, no, you're not supposed to be wandering everywhere. Look, I am in the presence of God right now. Why am I thinking about my office? Why am I thinking about my money? Why am I thinking about, no, I shouldn't be thinking that way. We need to be able to do that. 
That was what David was trying to do. And that was exactly what Paul was talking about. That all these things, we need to bring them under subjection. We must expressly apply these solutions to bring our wandering mind and our, our wandering thoughts under subjection to the obedience of Christ. We have been given the power to do this. We can always ask the Holy Spirit to help us to do this. Some time ago, as I begin to round up now, some time ago, Pastor Mike spoke to us during a Sunday service, not too long ago, on how these thoughts and even the emotions and habits, he told us that they were spirits. And I agreed with him. He said they were spirits and that we must exercise our authority to, to bind them and cast them out. Or if you are too afraid to bind and cast out, you can simply very vocally reject them and their operations in our lives. He did say that in a church service, I remember. I can't very much be sure whether it was after the day I, I ministered or whichever, but he did say that. And he did name them. He did name them, all the emotions, all the little things, habits, and, and, and all the besetting things that trouble us and trouble our mind and trouble our being. He named them right in church that day. And he said, you can say to this type of thing, I don't want you in my life anymore. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to get out. And they must get out. And that is the same way we have the authority, like we have seen what David has done, to speak to our mind and say, no more wondering about, especially when I am in the presence of the Lord. You need to be disciplined and you ask the Holy Spirit to help you and he will do so. So I strongly believe that the Lord is looking for men in this day and time to equip. I can, I've never seen him. I've seen, I've seen him walk around the church many a times. And I have said to us something that he reminded me this evening before I came on, uh, that he did say through me sometime that he, Holy Nation Church is a powerhouse for me. So now it, 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 it came together for me because this is exactly what he was trying to do. If you can arrest your wandering mind, then you can do great things. So what he's saying in effect is that this is the season, this is the time he's looking to launch people, men, men. He's looking for men to launch into missions, into ministries, into a lot of things that he wants. Only him can decide what he wants these men to do for him. But I'm saying that just as Pastor Wiki said, we need to position ourselves. And the only way we can position ourselves is to make sure that in his presence, when we have come to receive from him, that our mind is not wandering. He's looking for those he will equip to do great exploits in this time and season. So we must position ourselves by dealing with this problem he has identified by himself. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Beautiful. Absolutely powerful. Brother Sam, thank you so much. Amazing. Absolutely powerful message. Thank you. Um,